Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Father, we thank you today. What a marvelous, exciting week this has been. And we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory for all that's happening all over the world on the Victory Network today. In Jesus' name, we praise you for it because Jesus is Lord. And we thank you and we desire your presence more than life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Marilyn, this has been absolutely wonderful. Well, I love you dearly and love to be with you. Your your face stimulates mine. (laughs) I'm going up another notch. Amen. Now, I, I read this note. I didn't know this until I read this. In Pakistan, 32 suicide bombers took an oath to kill you. Now, I want to read the scripture. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength. Notice the word strength there. This is Revelation 12, 10. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. What's the word Christ? The anointed one and his anointing. You can't, you can never separate the anointing from the power or the power from the anointing. That's very important. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony or their, their confession of their mouths. And they love not their lives unto death. Now this is, you, you have to be like this. You have to be so um, Focus. focused. I'm called to be here and I'm going Come hell or high water, I'm going to do what I'm called to do. I'm going to be there one way or the other. And uh, listen, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, is there. Right. And that 57th verse. Thanks be to God, which always gives us the victory. He's talking about victory over death. He's right. talking about victory over the grave. Right. Praise God. I remember Oral called me one day <laughs> and he said, Kenneth, oh, I can tell he's really upset over something. I said, what is it, sir? Oh, he said. <laughs> he said, now, Oral had had a stint put in back when those things were just had very beginning. Now, somebody said, I don't understand why Oral Roberts get all those people healed and then he had to have a stint. Healing is not a reward. That is so good. Now, when you lay your hands on two million people, you're going to get tired. Your faith gets worn out. You get beat up. You do. Amen. Amen. And he had to have medical help. I mean, the man built a hospital. You understand? We believe in medical science. Well, this was the early days of the stents and they had a, they had a, a lifespan on them and this thing was over with and then some. And they wanted to go back in there and put a, a, a more permanent one. And he said, they told me, Oral, this is too big a risk. Can, she, Kenneth, can you imagine somebody telling Oral Roberts not to take a risk? He was really mad. He was hollering at me <laughs> over the telephone. And um, he said, why wow, they said, just, just, just take it easy and take your medicine. And he said, they told me I might die. Oral Roberts, not taking a risk. And besides that, the other side of that is stunning. It struck me. Marilyn, that's still alive in me today. Mm. The other side of that is stunning. The Mm. victory over death is stunning. Exactly. Exactly. And you have to know it the way you know your own name and the way you know your hat size that God, we have victory over death and death can't kill me. Exactly. You can't kill me till I get my job done. Yeah. Amen. True. You can't do it, Satan. No. 
you can't take me out. Nope. You don't have the power to take me. Exactly. Amen. 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 You don't quit till you win. Till you win. <laughs> you see that right there? Yeah. Marilyn Hickey, it's not over until you win. Yeah. We win. We win. Hey, I just read from the back of the book. We win. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, we do. Woo! We do. Glory be to God, we did it again. I don't preach myself happy. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is all over this place. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Right. Woo! Glory be to Jesus. Let's talk about the 32 killers that wanted to take you out. Well, uh, they, that was my third meeting, and uh, I think it was. I want to say 27, maybe 32. But anyway, they took an oath to blow up the stadium and to kill me. So the government's all nervous, you know, because they don't want the stadium blown up. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Appreciate all that compassion. You, yeah, you it's for. really <laughs> encouraging to hear this. So uh, <laughs> they said, you can't use the stadium. Stadium. We don't want it blown up. <laughs> so I had to go and I got a football field, you know, for the meeting. And so, you know, people said to me, you know, they're going to kill you. And I got this, you know, what if they kill me? Yeah. I said, what if I'm a martyr? That's the closest place you can get to the throne in yes. Revelation yeah. 5. Yes. So I said, uh, you know, if I die, and then I told the devil, I said, you know, if I become a martyr, I'll be very famous. Because they say they killed some old lady in Pakistan. Look how cruel these people are. And people will say, oh, she died for her faith, you know. So I said, you know, if you want to kill me, I'm going to get more saved than I do in my life. Yeah. And that was the end of that. Yeah, you could just tell him, remember Samson? <laughs> I did. Yeah. And another yeah. thing. Now you're talking to something. They got nervous, so they hired a man with a gun outside my room 24 hours a day because they didn't want me to be killed. <laughs> <laughs> and I slept very well. And at that time, I was memorizing the Gospel of John. So when I'd get afraid, I'd just start speaking the scriptures. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. So, and I look back at some of these things, you know, and being warned. But if God has called you to do it, well, you do it. I don't want to miss what's on the other side of the mountain. Uh, yeah, amen. You know, we amen. speak to mountains, but why do we do it? To get what's on the other yeah. side. What's on the other side is revival in Pakistan, revival in these countries. That's the key. The danger is being afraid and not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I had someone say to me, <clears throat> well, you don't want to take your airplane in there because, you know, it, it, that uh, it, it might be in a danger zone and somebody might destroy the airplane. So and so you, you don't. No, 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 no. No. If I decide I'm that afraid, now my airplane's in danger because I left it at home. Can't you, you see, see where you're going with that? You, you can't, you cannot use fear and win. No. Fear has no place in this business. Right. None whatsoever. Right. Because the spirit of fear is the spirit of death. And that's the open door to death right there. Right. Right. That's the first step to either failing the mission or being injured or dying. And that's not a true martyr. No, no. You just got killed because you were afraid to go. But when you just, I've got this, I've spent the time praying over this and I, I, I remind myself of all of the times in the past and then you just get excited about it and you get thrilled about it and you get, come on, glory to God, let's go. And we just had the meeting out in the streets we didn't have a place. And so we just blocked off the streets. And you say, did you ask? No, 
<laughs> he just did it. We just did it. And a Catholic priest uh, loaned some of his land for us to use for the overflow. And oh, we had God. some of the most unusual miracles I've ever had. And I, it was a last minute change. You don't have time to advertise it. And yet we had over 30,000 people and more coming in for that. Oh, I mean, some of these things, I look back and think, God, that is so awesome. Have I rejoiced in you enough over this? Yeah. You know, we had a big meeting. Another thing, I took staff with me, just a few. I don't take a lot of people. You don't want to. You don't want to look big. You want to look little, woman, weak. You, that's the way you want to look. And so I went to the husbands or the wives and said, now, I want you to know your husband or your wife are in danger. Yeah. So I'm not, if you don't want them to go, I understand and I'm fine. They said, no. They said, you know, if they die, they die a martyr. That's a wonderful way to die. Well, none of us died, but we had thousands of people get changed. That is what's so important. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, people think, oh, it'd be exciting to travel with her, would it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, these, these are people that really are called of God to get out there and put yeah. your life on the line, yeah. you know, so. What's next? <laughs> well, next, of course, I want to do Saudi Arabia. Oh, of course. But I also want to go back to Pakistan. And, you know, there are some things I would like to do in some other countries. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing some things in Europe because I think Europe is so desolate, you know, I would like to see some doors open in Europe to go in. Marilyn, what about Spain? Do you get anything about Spain? I have been to <coughs> Spain and I've done healing meetings there, also in Portugal. I don't have any real strong leading, but you know, uh, TBN is in there and I think that's been a big thing. The thing about Spain is uh, they hate the Catholic Church. And so we have to go in and love them all. Mm -hmm. We love the Catholics. We love anybody. We love the atheist. So if you can promote it, it's a healing meeting for everybody, mm -hmm. atheist, everything. Mm -hmm. And the same with Buddhists. If you say, I love Buddhists, they really <laughs> respond to you. But what happens saying these things is people begin to feel it. Because I told you, I go into grocery stores and Muslim women will come over and lean against me and say, I don't know what it is about you, but I just love you. Oh, praise God. And see, I said that so long. Well, they're starved for love in oh, the Oh, they are. Place. They are. Yeah. And if you read the Quran, there are a lot of things they tell you that are in their Quran that are there, you know. So, you know, they say they hate Christians, you know, all that. But we say we love them. Yeah. Yeah. And I do individual. I have a family in our city, Muslim, and he did, had a limousine service. And that's how I met the man, Dave, that was the head of it. And so I began to witness to him. And uh, so then I asked if he and his family would come over for dinner. You know, most people will come for a meal. <laughs> So they came over for dinner and I got to talk to them and, you know, fed them and sweet to them and ministered, gave them Bibles and so on. And it looked like they just kind of dropped out on me. You know, that was, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago. So recently, because I'm in and out of our church because of travel, I went in and here was Saman, the youngest of them. And he said, you know, I go here to church. I'm getting water baptized. And this is my girlfriend. She's gotten saved too. And this came from way back there. And yeah. you know, the Lord says to you, our labor in the Lord is never in vain. Cause sometimes we think, duh, yeah. I did all this and zero, but it's never in vain, Kenneth, never. I've noticed, I've had the Lord correct me on this many more times than once. My knowledge about a place is the last time I was there. And um, 
but because Jesus was there, he's still there. I came back to Fort Worth. He's still there. And, and the, the, th the thing is it, still progressing, particularly if, the, if all the prayer staff is still doing their job and I'm doing my prayer job and, and things, then it's working. And you, you, that's one of the real difficult things to learn, but that's why we look not at the things which were seen. And you don't remember something just based on what you saw while you were there. That you have to believe that what you did worked. Exactly. Think about Philip and one man. Right. The, one man yeah. out in the desert. And the length that the length that God went to to get that one man. Just one guy. But that changed Ethiopia. Exactly. Which became very important. Right. Now, Philip didn't go there anymore, I don't guess. There's nothing, at least nothing in the no. Word says anything about it. But if all he remembered was baptizing that guy in this supernatural water hole that showed up <laughs> in the middle of the desert, glory to God. Right. But then you, you, you have to know that if God went to that length to get me in front of that guy, he's got a plan that goes on and on and on and on and on. And you know, you're talking about Ethiopia. Uh, years ago, really, that was my first country to really get into was Ethiopia. And they were in a, a drought. It was really, really bad. And I thought, oh my goodness, it, God really put it on my heart to pray for Ethiopia. So I thought, you know, if I could get in there and take in Bibles, and take in food, but I couldn't get a visa. I tried. And so uh, we had a woman in our church, an Ethiopian woman who'd become a Christian. So I told her I'm calling the Minister of Affairs in DC and to try and get uh, a visa, I can't get it. Well, she said, what is his name? Well, their language is real different. So I said, well, you know, I, I don't know for sure, but I've written it down, I can't, tell you what it is. So she looked at it and she called him. She had the number. She got through to him and she said, you'll have your visa tomorrow. She spoke to him in their language. Whoa. Uh, and I said, well, how did you get it? She said, he's my old boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God is very economical. Oh man, I'll tell you, listen to that. <laughs> and I've been in Ethiopia a lot. There's a lot going on in Ethiopia. And so you don't know. No. He can use old boyfriends. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? He's got a plan. He's got He's a plan. Always has a plan. He's got a plan. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. So that I've been to Ethiopia quite a bit. I like Ethiopia. The people are so warm and so gracious. And you know, the Bible tells you in Jeremiah that you know an Ethiopian by their looks. And once you identify an Ethiopian one, you'll know them all. And they work in the airports quite a bit. Yeah. They're very sweet, very warm people. But a lot of good things are happening in Ethiopia right now. So I think we think, well, we hit it one shot, but we don't know how many more mm, people are gonna hit right. it. And how it's like you told right. about the eunuch. You don't know, you don't know how that's going to go on from there. We're only one of a plan. Kenneth, and I have to think of you teaching faith, starting out in the way you did teaching faith. I remember listening to your tapes. You know, I'd be getting dressed in the morning and listening to your tapes, building up my faith, listening to Kenneth Copeland. How do you know how many people are into faith? You know, <laughs> it, you get, it really focus, particularly in the beginning when you don't have anything <laughs> and you get really focused on what you're doing, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, and, and of course I, I learned by getting totally immersed in Kenneth Hagin's tapes. I had, I had found, a, I had such a love for the Spanish language. I wanted total mm. immersion so bad. And I had, because I had found out what they did in World War II, 
when total immersion, you couldn't speak anything but the language, yeah. and it was out in Monterey, California. I didn't know And in that. six weeks, you were conversationally fluent. And within a year, you were an interpreter. Wow. Well, they still have those schools today. And uh, oh, I wanted to do that in Spanish. It was really bad. Anyway, and I thought, this will work with the Word. Glory to God. And I heard those tapes, and I just, just buried myself in them. Well, <clears throat> that whole total immersion idea, <sighs> thank you, Lord, help me with this. You bury yourself in the Word and you surround yourself with what you're called to do. Now, there's other things you, you, you have to do, but, but that has to be first place in your life. And a person that is a business person and you know you're called into that business, that's, that's wonderful. To be successful in that business, you're going to have to learn from God what the, how that business works and it, the, the ins and outs of that thing. And when you start doing that, you start getting things other people in that business don't even know. And the wisdom of God makes you a success. They start coming to you. How are you doing this? Particularly in today's economy. You say, you really want to know? <laughs> and it, it, it's the same principle. Well, even back there then, what, when you said you were listening to those tapes yeah. in, in the morning time. Feeding right my time. faith, yeah. Just feeding your faith. Amen. Feeding your faith. Feed it all the time. Yeah. Your faith is always hungry. <laughs> you just That's feed good. it all the it time. It is hungry. It's always hungry. Always hungry. It's never satisfied. Nope. And you just keep feeding it and right. feeding it and feeding it. Gloria and I have some of the some of the finest meetings right there in the bed. <laughs> I bet, I bet. <laughs> we'll listen to Brother Hagin. May, may not get over about 10 or 15 minutes into it. And all of a sudden we're in it and then we just lay there and talk for an hour about healing and so forth yeah. and we're out of time. Oh yeah. Ah! That's too bad. <laughs> it happened again. Marilyn. Again? Yes. <laughs> Haven't this, hadn't this been enjoying with... Yeah. Enjoyable with Marilyn Hickey. Glory to God. Thank you, darling girl. Oh, thank you. We appreciate it thank so much. You. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.